Hey art nerds, it's time for another watercolor chat. So it's September here in, I guess everywhere. In Louisiana though, it's really hurricane season. We don't necessarily get fall the way more northern states might. We don't, definitely don't get fall the way Tennessee does. Fall here in Louisiana is either beautiful days that are still kind of hot, rainy, rainy days because hurricane season, or every now and then you get a really crisp, perfect blue day, but that's usually a little bit later on in October. So this is part of my Kara T series. These are potential postcards for the Volume 2 Kickstarter. And um, since they are teas, I wanted to do a fall inspired tea. Now, originally I had like pumpkin spice latte, but that really falls more into the coffee category. So let's imagine this is a masala chai or even a ginger tea latte, both of which I love and both of which I think are just wonderful warming fall drinks, especially for those of you who actually get fall weather. So for this piece, I really wanted to focus on the beautiful multicolored fall leaves. And I'm using a technique that I used in another video, the video where I was kind of testing out the Albrecht Dura watercolor markers, where we have just this beautiful wet into wet color play. We kind of pick a color story and move through it. So like for this one, for example, we have a little bit of Indian yellow. We have a little bit of really bright sunny yellow. We have a little olive green, and then we have some undersea green. Or this one, we have a warmer yellow moving into Chinese orange with just a little bit of scarlet mixed in. And I'm using this wet into wet technique for all of the leaves. Now, the key to this technique is not to overwork it, which those of you who've watched a lot of my watercolor videos might know, that's definitely one of the areas I struggle with. So this is a great opportunity to kind of just practice letting the paint speak for itself. So as with the strawberry tea video, I'm painting in a Canton XL watercolor sketchbook. And this was originally sketched with a color pilot, uh, sorry, a pilot color Eno lead in pink. Since the pink basically disappears when you watercolor over it. And I have several more seasonal tea illustrations coming up. So if you enjoy these videos, you're in luck. We have several. And I'm also going to use the base sketches as inspiration for some of the images that are going to be in the Kickstarter coloring pack. So if you enjoy these illustrations, if you're watching along and you're like, I'd like to try my hand at that, they're coming up in the pack. So keep an eye out for that. So the key here is just kind of take your time, work your way along, and kind of vary your color pattern. So when it comes to fall leaves, and I'm referencing oak leaves for this, so we have different types of oak leaves and different types of acorns here. Um, I wanted to kind of show the beautiful color gamut you can get from those really bright red leaves to the golden pop of orange leaves to the brownish red leaves to even the ones that are still green or green and yellow. Just really trying to capture that fall color, especially since here we're not going to get that so much. So just trying to crystallize those memories. That was one of the things I did actually really love about living in the, in the Nashville area, living in Tennessee. And then every fall, Joseph and I would take a trip to visit with some friends who were from Charlotte and we'd meet up in Hot Springs, North Carolina. And that's part of the mountains and they have natural hot springs. And not only are the leaves just gorgeous, but there's natural hot springs that you can visit and there's lots of hiking and of course, good company. So this kind of puts me in mind of those memories. So one of the colors I'm using a lot in this illustration would be Sennelier's Chinese Orange. It's this warm, rich, slightly granulating orange. I really love it. I'm not necessarily a big orange person unless we're talking about like drawing candies. Um, and I, I usually prefer to mix my oranges if I'm using oranges, but Chinese orange is just such a good color and it gets a lot of use in 7-inch Kara as well. And for her skin, it's a mix of yellow, ochre, and scarlet, one of my favorite mixes when it comes to lighter skin tones. And I actually have a tutorial on how I go about mixing different skin tones. If you'd like to check that out, I'll link that down in the description below. It's not intended to be the end all be all. It's not intended to be a definitive source. It's just how I go about doing it. And it's designed to be an inspiration for people who are looking for a starting point.
So one of the things I've been enjoying about these tea illustrations is that they really just invite a light, sketchy watercolor approach. They're fairly fast to complete. I usually begin them in the evening around six or seven, finish, well, end the day around 12 because I am a night owl and then pick it up the next morning to finish it. So these move a lot faster than some of my other watercolor illustrations. So it allows me to be able to paint a lot of them. And I really actually like the lighter, sketchier watercolor approach, not just because it's a little bit more economic time-wise, but also it just gives this really sun-kissed, sun-lit approach. So in this style, what you really wanna focus on is your base color, utilizing the white of the paper, and then also having dark enough local color shadows, that's shadows that are based on the actual color of the object rather than using a contrasting color to create your shadows. Um, and that's going to give you that kind of like golden afternoon look. Now, one of my other favorite colors that's getting a lot of use, getting a lot of love here, is Daniel Smith's Undersea Green. If you're not familiar with this color and you love granulation, this color is for you. It's a beautiful, deep, rich green. It's wonderful for foliage. It plays well with a lot of other greens that you might use when painting flowers or when painting grass, and it mixes beautifully with indigo. But in and of itself, it also granulates beautifully, and there's yellow greens and greens and a little bit of red and even a little bit of blue in it and it's just such a gorgeous color i highly recommend it if you're like me and you like painting leaves and you like painting grass and you just use green a lot appetite green another daniel smith color is also a wonderful color if you're looking for something that has this interesting granulation that can add a lot to your piece. And our leaves are really relying on that interesting granulation because I'm not going to go over them with several layers of shadow. I'm not gonna try to render out all that beautiful color. What I really want people to notice first are the wet into wet blends. Now, if I was painting on a cotton rag paper rather than a cellulose paper like this one, you would get even more beautiful wet into wet blends, more subtle gradations. Cellulose, everything just kind of sits on top of the paper, so you can get a lot of color movement, but when it dries down, it doesn't necessarily dry down as subtle and as gradiated as it might on cotton rag. You get more splotchy gradations, which when it comes to fall leaves, actually works out quite nice. It adds a lot of visual interest. So there's reasons to use cellulose paper in addition to cotton rag paper, because both do have something to bring to the table. Both do offer something interesting. So now that I have this almost entirely painted, I'm doing a little bit of outlining using more saturated version of the local color. Now, sometimes that just means I let my paint evaporate in my little plastic palette. Sometimes that means I mix it a little bit deeper. And I'm using a plastic palette rather than a ceramic palette simply because I don't yet own a ceramic palette that has all these little wells. I'm sure I will get one soon. I've been falling more and more in love with ceramic palettes and since I'm traveling less, I'm not as concerned with breakages, but I don't have one yet. That's definitely on my to buy list. Speaking of to buy lists, I am working on my 2020 best of. I felt like 2019, there just weren't as many interesting things that I got to review that I was able to purchase. Since I don't get sent advanced stuff and I don't get invited to like CHA, most of what I come across is either on AliExpress, on Amazon, or when I'm out in the wild just looking at art supply stuff. And since we've moved to Louisiana, I no longer have access to like Jerry's Artorama or Plaza, but I do have access to a wonderful art supply store called David's Art Supply. So if you're in Louisiana, it's in Metairie, and I highly recommend you check it out. It is fantastic. The people who work there are knowledgeable and kind. The owners are really nice, and they've been around forever. I used to shop there in high school. I shopped there in undergrad and I highly recommend you give them your patronage now. It's actually named after their dog. Uh, the owners have kept Weimaraner dogs for a really long time and David's kind of their mascot. So if you're lucky, you might see the latest David in the back of the store in the framing section. If you do, tell him hi for me. Anyway, talking about David's Art Supply, what I really like about David's is they get unusual stuff. They get stuff that isn't, you know, run of the mill. You see it at every art supply store. And sometimes I see things that originally started on AliExpress there. So every now and then I get to see something really innovative. 
So at this point, everything's had a chance to dry and I'm inking using the Tombow Furunosuke brush pens. And I really like these. I need to do just like a standalone review where I talk about why I love these and how awesome they are so I can convince all of you to check them out. Tombow markets them more towards calligraphers, but yo, Tombow, us artists like these things too, especially comic artists. So you should, you should give us some love here. What I like about them is not only are they brush pens, but they are waterproof, Copic proof, which is a big deal for me, and they come in some beautiful colors. And one of the reasons I want Tombow to notice us artists, us not calligrapher artists, is I want them to introduce even more colors, some subtle colors, some peaches, some shadowy colors, expand the range because what they have now is mostly bright primaries. And while those are very useful, you can see me using them here. <laughs> I'm greedy and I want all the colors. And then finally, now that I've inked it, I'm going to go back in and add a little bit of white gouache just to add some delineation, to add a little bit more contrast and to add some pops of white here and there, especially on top of the cup where we've got our pumpkin painted. So that about wraps it up for this watercolor illustration. I'm sitting warm and cozy in my home, listening to the wind blow the leaves outside. It almost sounds like the ocean. Kind of wish I could share that with you guys. Hurricane season is definitely upon us, but hopefully you're able to stay safe. I'm able to stay safe. I'll definitely keep you guys in my thoughts and I wish you guys all the best this fall season. Thank you guys so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you'll look forward to some of my other tea illustrations. I like using these videos as just an opportunity to kind of just chat about what I'm working with and whatever's going on in my life. It's a nice opportunity to just kind of hang out and catch up. If you like hanging out with me, every Saturday night I have a power hour live stream, although Let's be real, they're usually more like two hours. And I do all kinds of things from hosting workshops where I show you how to draw, paint, or marker a specific thing. We've done frogs, we've done mermaids, we've done flowers, showing you guys how I paint people, to doing request streams where I take your requests and I draw them, which is perfect for drawing along. It's like a little art hangout, you know, hanging out with your art friends, which right now during COVID, I know a bunch of us really miss. I definitely miss it. So it's just kind of an opportunity to safe, safely socialize and make some art together. You guys can find announcements for upcoming power hours in my community tab, or you can join my Discord server, The Paint Box. I will announce upcoming power hours there. So thank you for painting along with me. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope to see you guys again soon. If you enjoy what I do here and you're not a subscriber, make sure you click that subscribe button and the notification so YouTube lets you know when a new video has gone live. I'll see you guys again really soon. Have a wonderful day guys. Bye!